Last month, my uh, parish celebrated our 31st annual summer festival for four days. In an unusually rainy summer, we were blessed with great weather on all but one day. And even then, it rained only for a short time. Large crowds of people were in attendance each day, and everyone seemed to have a great time. One young man even decided to propose to his fiance in one of the game booths. He arranged in advance with me that his girlfriend would select a prize-winning ticket. In the prize envelope she selected would be the engagement ring. As she opened the envelope and saw the ring, he went to one knee and proposed. A nice crowd of people witnessed the special event and gave the two of them a loud round of applause and wished them the best of luck. There was a large circus tent set up with a dance floor and many tables around it where people could sit to enjoy the music and all the food and beverages. There was Italian and Slovenian sausage, meatballs and cavatel, barbecue chicken and ribs, burgers and hot dogs, cabbage and noodles, beer, wine, pop, and so much more. It truly was a feast set for a king, and all the people went home so full and so satisfied. There was a tremendous sense of energy and excitement on the property of our parish for four days as individuals and families from the wider community enjoyed good summer weather and great food, drink, and music. Two of our scripture readings today speak about feeding people, a fine meal which can transform them and make them better persons. Proverbs tells us that wisdom has invited the simple to a feast where the meat has been prepared, the wine has been mixed, and the table has been spread. Those who respond to the call will partake in food and drink that will nourish them and help them to change. They will forsake foolishness and advance in the way of understanding. In our Gospel reading from St. John, we listen to the Bread of Life discourse, as we have done for the past three weeks. Jesus calls himself the Bread from Heaven. His flesh will be given for the life of the world, and his flesh will be true food and his blood true drink. Partaking in this meal will allow people to remain in him and he in them. Catholics believe this is a clear reference to the Eucharist. This is our wisdom feast. Jesus gives himself completely in this sacred meal he has prepared. We have life through this union with him and with one another in the Eucharist. I mentioned last week in my homily how former President Lyndon Johnson began to attend daily Mass in the Catholic Church in Johnson City, Texas when he retired. Some say that he was open to the Catholic faith for many years because as a young college graduate, he taught in an elementary school in Cotula, Texas. Almost all of his students were children of Mexican immigrants. Their poverty and the prejudice they endured from others profoundly impressed Johnson. He often said publicly that what he saw in them impelled him later as president to initiate the war on poverty and champion the civil rights of blacks and other minorities. The Catholic faith of his students and of their families also deeply affected him, he said. His students and their parents had almost everything going against them, yet their faith, nourished at Sunday Mass, sustained them. May our faith be nourished today as we celebrate this Mass, and may it sustain us in the coming days as we seek to do good and to be better people.